Hello, it's me, Miss Waller Largen. I hope you're having a great day. And I'm excited to be here with you today to share a lab experiment about weathering and erosion. So um, I have some colored pencils that represent um, the different colors of Skittles that we're gonna be working with. And so for our materials, for this particular lab, we have Skittles. Um, I actually want to put a little bit of a fun twist on it. So I actually have some sour Skittles and those are on this plate. And I have some wild berry Skittles. Those are over here on this plate. And then my regular Skittles are back here on this plate in front of me. So what is weathering and erosion and why are we doing a lab about it? Well, weathering and erosion are processes that shape our planet. Um, they take parent rock material and turn it in to minerals, rock fragments, and sediments. So what we're going to do right now is we are going to use a pipette or water dropper which I've already given to some of you. Some of you will get next week and some of you who are remote, let me know and I'll get you some at the office they can ask for whenever they pick up your packet. It says to use the pipette to squeeze 10 drops of water onto your Skittle from a distance of roughly six inches. So I have a ruler so I can measure approximately six inches, about right here. Then it says to record your results in visual format. Draw what it looks like in the box below using colored pencils or crayons. Record your results in written format. Describe what is happening. Repeat steps two and three after 20, 30, 40, and 50 drops. So I have a um, little boxes to put my information in. You guys don't have that on your lab sheet. You just put yours um, on your lab sheet where there are spaces. So let's get started. I have three Skittles here. One is purple, one is orange, and one is green. And I wanna drop from about six inches height. So I'm about right here. And I wanna try to drop it right on the S. One, two, three, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so with ten drops, the S is still there. There's a little bit of purple on the plate. Now I'm using a plate instead of a tin pan because that's what I have readily available. When you work on this lab at home, you'll do the same thing. All right, so that's 10, so I need my purple colored pencil, and I would just draw my Skittle and some shading underneath it. Okay, that's with 10 drops. Now, 20 drops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So I have a darker shade underneath my Skittle. So I'm gonna draw purple. I'm gonna shade it in, but not as dark. And then I'm gonna draw the shading under it to be darker. So at first, my Skittle was completely colored and the shading under it was real light. Now, I can see changes are happening even though I'm not putting any drops. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my next 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And so I have a lot of white on my purple Skittle now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
draw my skittle, but I'm going to kind of barely color it in. And underneath it, I'm going to color more darker because that's where it seems like all of my color from my skittle has gone. Ten more drops. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, and a couple to grow on. Now my Skittle is almost completely white, but I can still see the S. So I want to write that down for my visuals. I can still see the S with 40 drops. Still see the S. I'm going to write that it's mostly white. And so for my drawing, I'm going to draw my Skittle. But underneath it, I'm going to draw a lot, like a lot of um, dark shading around it. Final drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. All right, so half of my S is gone. Half of S is gone. And mostly white. Mostly completely. And of course, I want to do my color observation with my colored pencil. And so I'm gonna let my puddle just go everywhere. So from 10 drops, I'm gonna put um, some color in water around Skittle. And then I'm going to put more color around Skittle. Lots of color around Skittle. So it's almost like a um, gradient as it went from a little color around the Skittle to a lot of color around the Skittle and the Skittle is almost completely white. Now let's try this with purple with the um, sour Skittles. Let's try this with purple with the sour Skittles. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten. All right, so very little color under the Skittle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The S is almost gone. May I have your attention, please? One, Pardon the interruption. Two, three, this is just an update from our staff meeting that we had. Um, I would like to say congratulations to Ms. Novikowski. She has just received a $17,500 check to help with our Ag in the Classroom, Bees, Gardens, and Chicken 
visions and everything that we have she has in her vision so i look forward to working with her and you all and making these spaces on campus student friendly a peaceful place for teachers students and staff congratulations miss novakowski yay good job miss nova lots of color around skittle and then our final 10 drops Oh, Skittle mostly white. Now, I can go back and draw those as a gradient. They should be drawn as you go through. So it almost seemed like the um, the sour skittle has that sour stuff on the outside of it, so it was harder to get it to weather and erode than it was the regular skittle. So that seemed like the difference. You can do those differences at home and try this at home. I do recommend you try this at home because it's a simple lab that you can um, really see. All right, so that is the lab, 10 drops at a time with your pipette and I'd like to share my data sheet with you guys. So here's what I have for my data. You can see that the Skittle starts out dark and ends up white. The Skittle starts out dark and ends up white because of the effect of the precipitation of the rain or the weathering from the pipette. So what does this all mean for Earth? What does it mean for Earth? Well, let's answer the questions to dis dis distinguish that. Um, when did mechanical weathering occur during this lab activity? So when the water is actually hitting it and there's actual physical contact, that is when your mechanical weathering is happening, including the weathering of our S on the Skittle. So we're gonna put when water, when water hit. When did mechanical, no, when did chemical weathering occur during this lab activity? When it sat in the water um, and lost its color. When Skittle, instead of saying it, let's say Skittle. When Skittle sat in water that's when some of our chemical um, reaction was happening. When did erosion take place during this lab activity? When the water is flowing off of and away from the skittle. So we're gonna put when water flows off of and away from Skittle. All right, what did the water represent in this lab activity? So these drops here, they represent rain. Very good, rain. 
rain, wind, um, any of those two can, either of those two can be agents of weathering and erosion. What did the color of the Skittle represent in the lab activity? So the color of the Skittle represented minerals, rock fragments, and sediment. Minerals, rock fragments, and sediments. And rock fragments and sediments are just pieces of that parent rock that are being worn away. What did the tin pan, or in our case here, the um, paper plates, represents the surface of the earth? So then this is what we're fi finished with. You can continue to work on the lab with different types of Skittles. You could do different colors and try to decide which, um, oh, can't get it straight, which type of Skittle erodes worse, which one erodes least. And these are our finished questions. I'll put them on canvas for you all. So, um, thanks so much. Have a good day.